Do you know what? I'm getting absolutely sick and tired of all the attacks on Keir Starmer. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm no lover of Keir Starmer, but we'd like to give him a chance, for Christ's sake. He just got into power, and within weeks, within weeks, if not days, the criticism started piling in, in right-wing media, but also online in the uh, chat forums. It drives me absolutely insane. And half the things they're complaining about is stuff that actually the Tories brought in. Let's get something straight, OK? Parliament has not sat down. It's in recess, OK? No new laws, no new rules or anything like that have actually come into play and haven't been signed off by our king. <laughs> our king, <laughs> not my king, no. But you see, people, uh, uh, they just want to attack. And these people have been fuelled by the right... Blimey, size of that bird. Guys, I could put a pterodactyl. Oh, that's a rewilding project we're doing here, you see. It must be. <laughs> anyway, the, um, the goal of these people to pass the blame on someone like um, Keir Starmer, Rachel Reeves, etc. Although they make mistakes. And things like Rachel Reeves said recently regarding SNP and what have you. I got my goals. I'll be making a video about that because I think that is a piss take. One minute <laughs> they're travelling uh, around, the, around the UK trying to get the governments on board, authorities on board. Hey, look at me. We're doing our thing. We're visiting Scotland, for instance. And then the next blooming breath, they're criticising the SNP for money they've spent. When you consider that they don't get all the money that they create in Scotland, I'm fed up with it. I'm absolutely fed up with it. It's just lies and lies and lies feeding the masses because they don't do their research. Because they have not been educated to work out the difference from what is real and what is not. You can't expect any government to get everything right and you certainly can't expect any government to get everything right in like five weeks, whatever, however long it is now. <sighs> It's actually boring. It's, every time I look like I've been X or I'm a feed regarding the news and stuff, the BBC is doing another attack. Right? No. It's a fuel duty next and a Brexit reset. There's, no, there's nothing been said about this yet. They're making this stuff up as they go along. It might be next. We're going to be looking at a rather, how to put it, tough budget. Pretty much because the Tories have pretty much destroyed our economy. They have increased our national debt from £700 billion when they took over from Labour. And they've got criticised, oh, there's no money left and all that sort of stuff. Apparently they left the letter. And now, <laughs> now we've got a national debt which is creeping towards £3 trillion. Oh, but the pandemic. The pandemic cost around 400 billion or something like that. All right? And how much money, how much of that money ended up in the back pockets of Tories and their friends? A considerable amount, you could say. This is getting ridiculous. People need to wake up, people. But they do. See the wood from the trees. Brexit reset is the headline in the Daily Mirror, apparently, which leads uh, with Sir Keir Starmer's attempts to foster a closer relationship with Europe. That is not a Brexit reset. There is no resetting the trade and cooperation agreement that was negotiated between Boris Johnson and the EU. There isn't. There might be a few add-ons, but the deal itself is the deal. That is it. OK. The only way you're going to get a Brexit reset is to cancel the deal and try and negotiate another one. Then what happens in the meantime? I don't think many people actually want that. They either want to rejoin the European Union or try and sort out or mitigate against the damage that this has done. Does say rejoin or join? Join! <laughs> there is no rejoining. We won't get the same deal. Now, EU sources tell the I newspaper... If Sir Keir Starmer wants to improve relations, he will have to agree to some key demands from Brussels. Now, I hate it when people say from Brussels. They should say from the European Union. 
not Brussels. Brussels is a place that just happens to be where they're, you know, they're set up. That's all it is. It's just a country. I hate it when they say that. It doesn't make any sense to me. What happens is the country itself gets villainised by the right-wing nutjobs out there. And it's not the country of... No, it's not Brussels. It certainly isn't Bruges. No. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> oh, dear me. It's just, it's just getting painful. It's just one thing after another. It's one tack after another on the Labour government. And it was bound to happen. I've said it in previous videos before. The right wing media has too much power. It has too much money. And it is based abroad. And they get away with flip murder, they do. They say whatever they boom well like, pretty much. And it's unfounded and untrue. But people listen. People take it on board. Now we go on about social media, how dangerous that potentially is. Polit polit politically, politically dangerous. There's also the mainstream media. And the problem is, there, are, there is mainstream media out there who... Well, speak the truth, but they, they get tarnished with the same brush. Now, the thing is, you see, you can hide mistruths with a few truths. And that's pretty much what the BBC does. I don't know if it's deliberate, I'm not going to say it is. But the BBC, you get one programme, or one article, I'll read it, and if I, hang on, that ain't right, that's, not, that's, that's inaccurate, or you've left out some key details here. For instance, Brexit reset. There is no re no joining the European Union without Article 49 and complying with criteria, uh, the Copenhagen criteria. There just isn't. And we do not comply. Our national debt is on par, if not higher, than our actual GDP. And our GDP per capita has very, very little profit in it. Which means there's very little tax take. You're wondering why Rachel Reeves is running around trying to steal money from here, there and absolutely everywhere to try and balance the books. And what happened to the previous uh, Chancellor when he said, oh, I just found an extra 20 billion? What happened to that? Just lies! Yeah, people will listen to it. And now we've got a government that is trying to mitigate the damage. I'm not saying they're doing a very good job of it. I'm sure they don't really say the right things. Or do they? And they just get drawn out of proportion because when you have the interview i'm doing this on off the cuff but when you're actually talking live you can easily make mistakes or say things that get you get pick the holes out of it it's not easy me just doing this it's not it's not easy it's just stuff coming out of my head you don't always get it right i'm not gonna lie to you though and that's what i expect governments to do not lie but they do. Or they are very had to put economic with the truth. They don't tell you the facts. They'll tell you what they might want to achieve, but give you no, no indication, no idea whatsoever how you're actually going to get there, or how they're going to get there, or how they're going to make your lives better. No. What they'll do is... <sighs> keep policies that the Tories brought in. That doesn't make any sense to me goes against what a Labour government truly is about. But anyway, that's my feelings. What do you reckon? Please leave in the comments down below. How do you feel about this? You know, I understand they need to be held to account for what they say. But what, how do you reckon we're, they're going to do or say the right thing, appease everybody and uh, not get criticised? How's that going to happen? It's not, because there's always going to be a line of attack by the right-wing media. It just is. <laughs> Labour's doomed, do you think about that, really? Unless they can make some major changes for the better. Toodaloo.